Hello everyone and welcome to another video with Cass on the Mizuma channel. And before we get started here, I think I can actually show you a Minecraft mod where uh, some of the original ideas came from for this project. So I'm going to use this mod called Extended Drawers by Matty Dragon to demonstrate uh, what kind of functionality we're trying to implement in vanilla. So uh, the way the drawers work is you can select whatever you want to have inside your drawers and you can pick items from them uh, and put them back manually. Uh, and I can also pick a bunch of items and if I touch uh, this block here, which is a controller, by double right clicking, it's going to uh, basically pick up all the items that uh, belong inside these drawers and uh, store them there, there automatically. So the items get automatically sorted, uh, which is something that uh, we can do in Vanilla Minecraft. You can, uh, you can also uh, place items here, they will go inside the hopper and uh, then be sent to the controller and they will end up where they belong. If you have an empty drawer and you have items that the system had never seen before, uh, then the items get automatically stored inside the empty drawer. But pretty much like chests in vanilla Minecraft, drawers also have a limit. So as you can see here, I am able to put up to 1024 items inside it. And if I try to put more, uh, notice how the system is not taking these items anymore. But one thing you can do is to uh, tell the system to automatically destroy some items if you get way too many of them. For instance, if I had a bunch of glass coming in, they don't have anywhere to go. Uh, but we still have room for, let's say, the, what is this called? The jungle log. So if I try to place to put jungle logs in, uh, these items are not able to go there, uh, despite the fact that there is a space for, for I'm trying to make a V. All right. <laughs> so yeah, they don't have anywhere to go. So you can add a lava bucket to a drawer in this mod and it's going to automatically destroy any excess items. So if you look here, now this, the controller is actually taking the items because it knows that there is a place for them. But once the, uh, the items try to go inside this drawer, they get automatically destroyed because there's no not enough room. If, and if we remove more items, then uh, yeah, it's going to fill up with the excess items and it will keep destroying uh, the excess items. And finally, now we get uh, the room that we need. So what you just saw is a mod that, besides other things, can help you deal with overflow. So let's start with the very basic functionality, which is item sorting. So we got an input chest here, and we got a hopper line here, and this design is styleable, and we can make a lot of them side by side, right? And this design uh, was done by Impulse SV ages ago, and the reason everybody uses this design is because it's awesome. It's compact, it's simple, it has overflow protection so that your sorters don't break if you get too many of the same item. It doesn't break the neighboring uh, items. It, it has simplicity, it has everything. It's awesome and there's a reason everybody uses the same exact design everywhere. And to be honest, you can even use this hopper as a redirection hopper here. Uh, but the, the small problem with that is that uh, this torch here powers not only this hopper, but also this hopper here, which is not really a big deal. You just need to have one extra item here usually, uh, but other than that, it's perfect. So based on Impulse's design, uh, me and a bunch of other redstoners a long time ago came up with this alternative design, which is rarely used, only special cases maybe. Uh, and all it changes is now it uses a dropper with an item inside and a hopper. So uh, it makes a little bit of better use of space because it uses the top here and uh, so now we have more room at the bottom here and it only powers this one uh, hopper here which is good because now we have free space here for this uh, barrel. So it uh, works normally as an item sorter but in this case uh, when uh, the, the storage is completely full, see this hopper is also completely full, let's place three iron doors which is a very common item that everybody sorts in survival and what happens is they all end up here, see, because there is no space here uh, with the storage, uh, it goes to the barrel, which cannot be powered by this block, very important, and then it ends up inside the overflow uh, storage. And from here, especially on larger systems, such as the, the examples I'm about to show you guys, there is a lot of stuff we can do with the overflow items. If you give gold to piglins, they can give, they can get you cryo obsidian, obsidian, blackstone, and all of these items here. And uh, what I believe they have in common is that uh, you kind of want most of these items but eventually you're going to get enough of them. Like, how many arrows do you really want out of bartering? A lot of people build this farm to get quartz, for instance. Everybody loves building with quartz. Quartz is useful for some crafts, such as comparators, for instance. And what ends up happening is you get way too much blackstone and gravel and soul sand. Uh, and you might just want to get rid of nether bricks, for instance, and not lose uh, the quartz, which is why it's important to make those items disappear even if you don't have a place to store them. So with this simple example here, we are sorting for uh, these specific items, but at the back here, uh, we have overflow control. And if the storage is completely full of something, 
then items go through this hopper line here and they end up inside this device which is responsible for destroying items so yeah if i pick just any item here like maybe this uh the snowballs here it detects that it has items and this is a lava cauldron as in a cauldron with lava inside traditionally what people do is they have their item sorters and at the end of the line they have a device similar to what i just showed you so the items get destroyed if they're not sorted by these items here but not with this system because this system only destroys items that it already knows so uh here is a good example there is a section for uh, items that it doesn't know here so it doesn't know any of these redstone components but instead of destroying them they're going to be stored here of course if this overflows <laughs> there is also a connection to the item destroyer there because we need to give a destination for these items but otherwise they all end up here and by the way i also added uh, a known stackable item sorter here let's just do a quick demonstration here by placing a few potions here they the only uh, special thing about them is that they don't stack i have let's have those items in there and yeah see the potion sorts to this uh the uh, string sorts to this one and yeah everything silent and perfectly good this small circuit here at the end is what sorts for uh, non-stackable items by the way here we have another nice example so we got items such as charcoal bamboo blaze rods sticks and uh, white wool which are items that you're probably going to use for a lot of different crafts in the game so you, you want to store and organize them uh, but what they all have in common is that they also serve as fuel for furnaces so as you can see here the overflow line takes the items and they end up all inside the furnace the furnace from the side which is where fuel goes so uh, if we look here if we place items to be smelted here it's going to consume one kind of fuel and then proceed to consume another kind of fuel and uh, yeah everything that's basically available as fuel is something that is going to be used by this furnace which is which makes it kind of a smart system in a way so see we're getting our items in here uh, this could as well be called a really smart design because it doesn't only store your items but also your decisions on what you make with these items so let's say we have some sand to be stored so uh, we're going to place our sand here there's an item sorter here uh, uh, with the filter here so sand goes where sand needs to go but once this runs out of room uh, the items are actually going to be transferred to this furnace here so sand becomes glass as it becomes glass it gets transferred inside the item elevator and goes back to the item sorter now as glass it's going to be stored inside this chest here and if this chest is now completely full uh, the, the overflow control is going to send the items to this device here, which is once again our item destroyers. The same exact cycle is valid for your wood. So in this case, I'm storing birch wood, birch logs here. If we run out of room, they go inside the furnace where they become charcoal. As charcoal, they go back to the item elevator, get sorted again, and then charcoal gets stored here. The overflow has a different thing that it does now. See, instead of going to the item destroyer, this hopper is going to steal these items and put them inside the furnace. So the extra charcoal oil is going to be repurposed as fuel for your furnace. And then if this gets completely full and this and this, I mean all the hoppers, then uh, yeah, this is going to also be full and the charcoal is going to end up in the item destroyer once again. And the final example is quite cool as well, uh, which is uh, the cobblestone. So cobblestone, once again, doesn't, doesn't fit here, goes to the furnace, becomes smooth stone, well, runs out of room, goes back to the furnace, becomes, uh, this is the actual smooth stone, right? <laughs> this is the smooth stone, and this is just stone. So, yeah, smooth stone, runs out of space once again, so no furnace for this guy anymore. This goes directly to the item destroyer. And this is a lot of logic uh, packed inside this small place here, because all we got here is the item sorter, the item elevator. Uh, and here, all we got to do is see these hoppers direct items to the furnace, while these hoppers direct items to be destroyed. And this hopper is just something uh, in between when uh, we still can use items as fuel here. And this is a really smart storage that basically does what you would expect from this set of items. And I think this is a really nice one. At this point, you guys probably got the idea. So you are ready for the final example here. Big example, but uh, also simple to understand, hopefully. Um, so you can see from the set of items that I've chosen here that uh, those are items that you can get automatically in Minecraft. Uh, especially from a farmer villager farm because villagers can farm potatoes and carrots and uh, beetroot stuff and we're also going to get seeds and things like that so down here we have the composter line everything that belongs inside the composter goes to the composter and after going inside the composter eventually uh, it's going to produce bone meal which gets inside the item elevator gets sorted and then it ends up inside the bone meal storage once we get too much bone meal here we are actually going to send the bone meal to this dispenser here the dispenser 
has a comparator right there, as you can see. And uh, it detects the presence of bone meal and it tries to grow this little piece of uh, bamboo here. By the way, this is a horrible farm, guys. Don't ever, <laughs> ever build this farm. This farm is just horrible. It doesn't have any detection, any proper size. If you want to do, if you don't have a proper system such as this, you should build a proper uh, bamboo farm. This is just for demonstration purposes, okay? All right, so bamboo grows, gets broken, and then goes inside. The item elevator once again gets sorted and goes inside. Guess what? The bamboo storage. And finally, once bamboo overflows, it goes inside the furnace as fuel. So what else? Uh, you will notice that uh, some items can also go inside the furnace, such as potatoes uh, and uh, kelp. So items such as potatoes and kelp <laughs> go to this line here called the furnace line, see? And they get inside the furnace. And if we get enough fuel, they become baked potatoes and dried kelp, which we also have here. So uh, as... Uh, and when they become these items, once again, they go through the cycle. Item elevator, and they get sorted, and they get stored. And once the storage is too full, they also go to the composter. It's a lot of rules. See, guys, see how compact this system is? But it packs all of these rules just because we are redirecting the items. And they have a high value inside the composter, actually. So, so they're really useful to have inside your composter. And this is a much better way of getting rid of these items instead of just or simply destroying them. All right? And then, uh, yeah, they get processed here, they become bone meal, they generate more bamboo, more bamboo, more bamboo is more fuel, more fuel makes more items. And what you get in the end is basically XP. So I need to execute a command here. Possibly recipes use it if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so yeah, the furnace keeps track of everything it has processed. So in this case, more than 3,000 uh, baked potatoes and over 3,000 uh, dried kelp as well. So eventually you can use this furnace to get a lot of XP. And considering that all of these items can be stored and produced automatically, this is uh, a nice source of XP. Yeah, so this is a really nice example with all kinds of redirections here. Uh, we can process items with composters, we can process items with furnaces, uh, and we can process items by the item destroyer. Uh, once again, we can send items back to the storage as processed items. We can do all sorts of things in a really small space. Uh, and in a really uh, well-organized way. So here I kind of improvised the, the hopper wiring and things such as that. And by the way, I'm using composters on top of hoppers to reduce lag. That's all. Som sometimes people ask me why I'm using those. Uh, and here I just separated a organized form uh, of doing your pipes or your redirection systems. So yeah, once you get your overflow inside your barrels, you can have uh, item kind one, two, three, so different kinds of items. And then you can have different destinations. So we have pipe one, Maybe this one's going to take the items to a composter. This one, maybe it's going to take it to a kind of furnace and different kind of furnace, which is which makes me a little bit sad <laughs> because I've been playing modded Minecraft and I've realized that uh, those are basically the blocks that can process items automatically in Minecraft. We have the furnace and we have the composter and that's it. Everything else is like made by you, which is interesting, but um, maybe boring. <laughs> so yeah, guys, I talked a lot in this video, but I hope that uh, these ideas are going to be useful to you guys and that it's going to make your vanilla style a lot more fun to play. Uh, if you guys uh, want to, to have this as a world download, let me know in the comments and I will make it available. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, also, thank you very much uh, to all the guys who have been, become patrons to my channel. I'm very thankful to you guys. And uh, yeah, thank you guys in general. And, uh, and you can expect more videos from me soon because this project is just basically a branch of another project. I created a project and then it branched it into two more projects. So now I have three projects to show you guys and those videos are uh, coming out soon thank you very much guys see ya